All right. Hey, everyone. We're live. Welcome to Victory Condition Gaming. My name is Doug. This is my channel where we do all sorts of board game and uh, tabletop game and RPG content. Uh, this is going to be a first for the channel. We're going to do our top 10 list of most anticipated role-playing games for 2018. And I'm going to ask you uh, if you like this type of content for this channel. Uh, I'm going to ask you for two things. One, give it a like down here in the bottom. And second, uh, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please subscribe. And uh, then that way I know that we'll need to do more of this type of content on the channel, which I, I'm really excited about doing. I think it's going to be a lot of fun, but I, of course I want to uh, get the barometer from, from everybody else that's viewing. Uh, tonight, we're going to do our top 10 list of most important most anticipated RPGs for 2018. I've invited a couple of my friends uh, to share their lists. Now, I'm going to start off and just give a little disclaimer. This is not, this is our most anticipated games for uh, 2018. It's not, uh, should, it's like not the all encompassing uh, list, unless maybe Alan's is. Mounds might be. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> but because uh, he's, he's the professional, we're, you know, Alan. Uh, Kent and I are just uh, content creators, but uh, if if you don't like uh, some of our entries on our lists, and you know that's fine, we we understand that. Uh, I think each of us have our own kind of different tastes of RPGs, so that's why I kind of invited each of these guys on, and I think we'll have a good mix. I, I'm really curious to see if we have any any crossover. Gamer two, we'll see. Uh, but let me introduce you to the guys that I've got to, on the show with me tonight. Uh, we've got Alan Barr from Gallant Night Games, and we've got Ken Blue from Role Play Podcasts. Guys, thanks for coming on and, and doing your top ten most anticipated role playing games of 2018 with me. Hey, it's a pleasure. Yeah, thanks yeah. for thanks for inviting me. No problem, no problem. If you haven't checked out these guys, I'm going to tell you right now, check out Gallant Night Games. They're making great role-playing games and other games. And then check out Role Play Podcast because Kent uh, does an actual play co podcast, which is awesome, and it's a lot of – it's just great content. Uh, so now let's uh, – let's, I'll give you guys – let's introduce you guys. Let's, uh, Alan, you want to introduce yourself real quick? Sure. I'm Alan Barr. I run Gallant Night Games. We make tabletop role-playing games and other assorted tabletop games. Awesome. That's, that's it. Sort of sweet. Sweet, sweet. And Kent, uh, you want to tell little folks a little bit about yourself? Yeah, uh, I'm Kent Blue. I am the Game Master and everything else over at Road to Play Podcast. Um, we do actual play of uh, many different uh, role-playing games from different systems. We we change it up a lot. I had changed up all the players. Uh, yeah, we're pretty silly and very... Uh, very inappropriate at times. So that's all right. That's, that's <laughs> it's it's a great uh, great to listen to. All right, let's get right to it. Let's give folks what they've been uh, tuning in to see. We're gonna start with number ten on our list. Kent, why don't you tell a little let's, before I, before we start our list though, Kent? Why don't you tell folks a little bit about your style of or role playing games that you 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 like. Uh, so that they have something to, to reference, you know, your what 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 you kind of went with your list by. Okay. Uh, yeah, I like. <clears throat> excuse me, my voice is going out, so I'm going to do the best I can here. Um, my style is short, rules like games. Uh, a lot of indie stuff that you can that are you can learn real quick and get to playing really fast. So, <laughs> but some of my list doesn't represent that. Nice, nice. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, Alan, what about you? What's what's your style of role playing game? Since you're 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 actually the quote unquote professional in this, uh, yeah. You know, you're you're the you're the industry expert. Uh, the on, the on quote this. unquote there is essential, I think. Yeah, it's 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 uh, you know, you're the one that's actually doing this for a living. We're just we're we're just two guys that uh, kind of yeah. just talk on the internet. Yeah, uh, I am all over the board. Are you? I, I own over 700 physical RPG books, so you will have a everything from the crunchiest of crunchy to the one page most narrative of narrative. So uh, nice, nice. Okay, so my list ranges quite a bit. Very cool. I, I think you're a little more crunchy than I am. I, I tend to, st I, I like. I'm I'm kind of like Kent in the fact that I like rules light. I like story driven RPGs. Uh, more than like I don't really like big crunchy games uh, all that much. Um, 
you know, I, I'll, I'll play them. I, I enjoy them. Uh, they're just not my go-to. So you probably will see some of that on this list. Um, so with that being said, Kent, let's start with number 10. All right. My number 10, excuse me, is um, it's actually a campaign for for a game, and it's the Massive Nar Let's Tap uh, for Call of Cthulhu, 7th edition. So it's nice. coming out. Uh, Massive Nar Let's Tap is probably their uh, most popular campaign in the setting of Call of Cthulhu. It's the one everybody runs. It's the campaign I want to run. I know the new 7th edition is coming out, and it's they're making it for standard Call of Cthulhu and also for Pulp Cthulhu. So yeah, that's coming out this year, and I'm really excited about it because I've always wanted to play it, but having the new updated rules is really excites me. Very cool. Very cool. All right, Alan, that, that seemed to get uh, a positive response from, from Alan. So uh, let's, uh, Alan, what, uh, number 10. So, so uh, yeah, mask is not on my list, but I ran the old edition and I am pumped for the new edition. So yeah. <laughs> I, I can, I can, I can uh, come along with that. Uh, no. So my 10th is, I'm probably going to say this wrong. Uh, Kaharnam. It just finished kickstarting. Yes, from uh, sort of, Mind Jammer. Yes, Mind Jammer Press. Uh, sort of an Arabian Nights uh, meets, uh, you know, uh, actually really just a very Arabian Nights, to, you know, A Thousand and One Tales uh, kind of feeling game. I've been looking for something like that since uh, Wizards have quit making Al Qadim for second edition D&D. So I'm, uh, this one looked right up my alley with... Uh, high fantasy Arabian night style story. So I am, I am psyched to see that come out. Nice. I, uh, I think Sarah Newton designed that. Correct. Uh, it's a translation of a French game from what oh, I understand. Is it? Oh, nice. Nice. Um, yeah, I backed that. Uh, the, just, just barely ended like a week or so ago. Yeah. We had this, uh, we had this call a little too late for us to plug them, but, uh, yeah. I am hopefully, very hopefully maybe, that. maybe they'll get some late backers. Or maybe maybe they'll allow some late backers. Um, I'm I'm also going to uh, give a little disclaimer that all of my games are actual like either they're they're games themselves. They're not campaign books. They are um, games. So that's and they're either new systems or revised editions or, or, or you'll see you'll see that. My number ten is a game which I don't know if it's going to be on either of your guys' lists, but it is the first. RPG from Renegade Games. It is called Overlight. It is a high fantasy game, and it is supposedly unique, a unique system that they're that they're uh, creating. It's set. It doesn't have orcs and elves and all that they've said, but it, it has like four or seven continents that are all stacked on top of each other, and it has like. Each continent is a, is a spectrum of color. I don't really know a whole lot about it. All I know is it sounds really, really interesting, and I want to know more about it. And that's why it's on my list, because there's not like any information hardly at all about this, but I'm really excited to see what they can put out. And, of course, Renegade's only been out for three years or so, and uh, this is their first foray into the uh, RPG market. So I'm really excited to see what uh, what they're going to uh, what they're going to put out. You'll have to uh, ho hopefully you'll get to chances. To, we'll get to see a little bit more in the coming months. Are yeah. they doing like board games and stuff in this world as well? I think so. Yeah, I think it's this this own, their own like proprietary universe that they're that they're uh, creating, and uh, the RPG I think is the first thing that they're going to put out. Huh, they made my uh, my favorite board game, one of my favorite board games. I am Which one is that? Now. Uh, Covert. Okay. I'm big fan nice. of Covert. So, they're at a con with me in uh, March, so I will nice. sit down with them and talk their ear off about this RPG, I think. Yeah, no, it sounds really cool. It, uh, it there's very little information about it, but it's on my list. To, I'm really kind of interested to see hear what it's hear what it's all about. See what the uh, the play style is like they said it's it's rules light it's uh it's very story driven and it seems to hit there's all sorts of races that they've said that they've they've got for it i'm i'm really excited for it i can't wait to see more about it yeah that sounds great that's that's my number 10 overlight from Rene renegade games all right ken number 9 all right my number 9 is uh numenera 2 discovery and destiny from monty games very nice very nice 
that was a very successful Kickstarter this year. Um, Numenera is a game I've always been interested in. Um, I missed the Kickstarter this the, for the second one. Uh, just didn't work out at the time, but I'm hoping to pick it up uh, once it releases this year. And it's um, uh, it's just the world is really cool. It's kind of a fantasy, but like in the future. So I'm really excited. I, I, I just I've listened to actual plays of Numenera, and it's just it's a really cool game, uh, cool sounding game that. You know, I'm looking very much forward to. It. I know that Destiny and Discovery are two separate books uh, that they're right. releasing out. So uh, now, now that you, that uses the cipher system, if I'm not mistaken, yes. correct? Yep. 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 And that's actually on sale right now. With the uh, the humble bundle is running a sale on the cipher system. So bundle of holding. Bundle of holding. I'm sorry, bundle of holding. Uh, they're they're doing a, a big bundle uh, for for uh, the cipher system. So if anybody's interested in this, definitely check out the uh, the the bundle of holding that's that's going on right now. Yep. So that's it. Uh, that's my number nine. Numenera number nine. Two. Numenera so, two. Yep. Good. Good. Uh, good selection. I, I, I like that one. Uh, you might see my that one on further on up my list. <laughs> <laughs> Spoiler alert. All right, Alan. Uh, so my next one is the Worlds of 2000 AD, the Judge Dread role playing game, coming from N Publishing. Nice. Uh, I, I love the folks at N Publishing and a lot of the work they did with their uh, their What's Old Is New system. And uh, this is powered by what's old is new. Plus, it's one of my favorite comic properties. So I am beyond pumped. Plus, if it does well, they're going to do a slain RPG. And that's that's pretty much great. So. Very cool. <laughs> Very cool. Now, Judge Dredd, are you a fan of the... You must be a fan of the movie that... Uh, the, the Carl Urban Carl movie. Carl Urban movie? Yeah. Yeah. I have a buddy that, uh, that really likes that movie as well. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. My number nine... There we go. Number nine is Outbreak Second Edition by Hunter's Books. I've had them on the channel earlier this year. Um, I have friends that love Walking Dead. Like we have Sunday night Walking Dead viewing parties when the show is airing every you know Sunday, and I think I can convert them into playing playing uh, Outbreak Second Edition. Uh, it's just it's. I like the fact that this game is not whether or not you're going to survive. It's whether it's seeing how long you can survive in the in zombie apocalypse. You are going to die in this role playing game, and uh, I like that. And uh, it's. It looks like the second edition looks uh, really good. Um, I'm excited to see it. They've got a free. Um, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, starter booklet that, that you can download and give it a try um the game's supposed to, the second edition book's supposed to be out at some point i think this summer and uh yeah it looks looks great i can't wait to play it i like games that uh that tell you you are definitely going to die i really do <laughs> yeah yeah that's uh you know if it's just just a matter of when yeah <laughs> <laughs> I think that really encompasses like the whole Walking Dead experience because you know everybody's gonna die at some point, and you just you're just waiting to see when when it's gonna happen. Yeah. All right, Kent, number eight. All right, my number eight is uh, Satanic Panic by Jim McClure from Third Act Publishing. Um, this was it was another successful Kickstarter that's coming out, I believe, in 2018, and it's. Basically, it's uh, what if the satanic panic, everything about it was was true. What if these games were actually bringing demons into the world and stuff? <laughs> and you play a, you you take a role as a secret government agent out to to stop the the further use and uh, of tabletop games. <laughs> so you're nice. busting into these D and D parties and stopping these people from playing D and D and the demons that they're bringing up. And that is awesome. Yep. Um, yeah, yeah, there's, there's, oh man, that's just totally, I mean, that's, <laughs> that's, that's everything that people were worried about in the eighties and early seven or late seventies when, when the role-playing games kind of, uh, became all the rage and people were just so up in arms about, uh, role-playing games. And so it's, it's kind of fun that uh, it's, the industry's kind of turned around and actually kind of, you know, making, uh, gist of, of that uh, period of time in, in the uh, history of the game so that's awesome yeah it's a really it's really cool there's actual plays out there run by excuse me run by Jim himself 
uh, on the Talking Tabletop podcast that are that are really really entertaining. Nice. All right, Alan, number eight. Yeah, so uh, mine is the fourth edition of Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay from Cubicle 7. I figured that was going to be on your list. Oh, yeah, that one. There's no way that one wasn't making. I was a big fan of second edition back from, uh, I believe, Green Ronin handled second edition at the time. And so uh, hearing one of my favorite companies is doing one of my favorite games. No way it's not making it on my list. I can't wait to die as a level one rat catcher in the sewers of Altdorf again. (laughs) <laughs> and again and again nice nice uh yeah i i i've tried getting into warhammer i just can't do it i don't know why it just doesn't I don't, seem to grab I don't me the, i don't play the mini games but man, the rpg is something else you gotta is try it, it. I'll, have to, I'll have to it's like somebody said what if we're gonna take D but make it as british as possible okay and and it's basically that hmm all right. And how are the rules? Are the rules pretty? Uh... uh, you know, so it's it's a modify. I mean, it's a D hundred roll under system. Okay. Okay. Um, I recall second edition being not crazy crunchy, but medium crunch probably. Okay. Um, probably on par with like D and D five E, maybe a little more. Okay. That's um, okay. I don't know. For the fourth edition, they've said they're tweaking it and streamlining it, so it might be a little more. Uh, a little more uh, planned out and thought out. There were some weird issues with second edition back at the time. Sure, but, sure. But I don't know. We'll see. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah, I, I assumed that was going to be on your list. I, I just wondered where it was going to be. <laughs> All right. So my number eight is from this company that, uh, Alan, I don't know if you've heard of them yet, uh, but they're from, uh, it's called Gallant Night Games. Those guys um, are hacks. Those guys uh, they're doing some pretty good stuff, I hear. I, I don't know. Um, it's this game called Tiny Dungeon Second Edition, and I'm gonna tell you right now that this is pretty much, I, this is this game is always gonna have a special part in my collection just because of the fact that uh, it's Alan's game. It is you know we were a Kickstarter uh, stretch goal that we're gonna do a campaign. Uh, in 2018 for this game, and so I'm I'm really excited. I've already downloaded the the player's guide, and and I really like the way it looks. Uh, it's rules light. It's I'm not as you as you're gonna see in this in this uh, list. I'm not a huge fantasy guy. I don't really like orcs, and I mean I shouldn't say I don't like them. I I do like it. It's just not my go-to. Like orcs, fa- high, you know, fantasy. That's just not something that I get into. My wife loves Lord of the Rings. She loves all that stuff. Me, I'm more of a sci-fi guy. I'm a more of a post post-apocalyptic guy, you know. So, but this game is great. I love it. It's so much fun. I think Alan just kind of took the rules and even took them to another level. And uh, I'm excited to see the finished product. It should be out uh, February. 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 Is that where we're kind of? Maybe. At? Yeah. Okay. That's what, says, that's what it says on the Kickstarter. And Alan, Alan usually uh, delivers. You know, on time or, or early on his kickstarters, and you know, if he's a little late on this one, that's all right. But uh, it, yeah, the, the book will the book will at the minimum begin shipping in February. Nice. If it'll arrive at everybody's house in February, that's going to be hard to say until we start shipping. No doubt. But, uh, I mean, it's just me and my wife shipping out of the garage, so you know, yeah, shipping yeah, sixteen hundred books takes time. No doubt. No doubt. I'm excited about it. It's really. Uh, it's it's. Yeah, I, I can't uh, can't wait to see the final product, and uh, yeah, and and I had to had to put it on my list because I am very excited about this. I've been reading the player's guide pretty much in my spare time the whole uh, ever since I downloaded it. So yeah, that's my number eight, Tiny Thank Dungeon you. Second Edition, Tiny Dungeon Second Edition by <laughs> Gallon Knight Games. Well, I won't I won't say no to that. All right, all right, Kent, number seven. All right, seven's where I get really indie. So all right, no, it's good. It's good. Do it. it. It's a game called Tension by Alex Roberts, coming out of Bully Pulpit Games. And okay, yeah, they do good stuff. Yep. So we all know Dread is a horror game that uses a Jenga tower. Well, this is a uh, kind of a romance game using a Jenga tower. It's about two. <clears throat> excuse me, about two players that that uh, really, really, really want. A relationship that really, really, really can't have one. Uh, okay. 
it has a lot of buzz coming out of conventions uh, like Metatopia and stuff like that. Um, and yeah, I mean, that's just, that's, that's my type of game, a kind of a different theme using a, uh, a different mechanic using the Jenga tower. So I'm really excited about it. Nice. Nice. Uh, I've always wanted to play dread. I've never played dread in my life. So, uh, I I've always, it's one of those games that's on my bucket list to, to, to try out. Uh, I think it's a lot of fun, but, uh, yeah. So it's kind of neat that they're taking that, uh, kind of system and, and putting it in a different genre. Yep. Well, if I'm ever near you, I will run Dread for you. I like nice. to run, I like to nice. run Dread. <laughs> you, you know, one of the bad things, I was at PAX Unplugged this, this year, and I, there were so many role-playing books that I wanted to pick up, and, and I did pick up, and I had in my hand, and I'm just thinking, am I going to be able to fit this in my luggage on the flight home? And I had to put so many role-playing books back just because I'm like, I don't have enough room for this. And Dread was one of them. I, I never see Dread in print <laughs> anywhere. And I found a copy of I should have just kept. I should have put. It's not a really really big book, but I, I should have uh, should have should have picked that one up. Yeah, it's really. Um, I like the book. I mean, it doesn't dread. I can you know whenever you come up to something, you you tr you pull a towel. You know, right? So that, right. That's the rules. So a lot of it is just kind of like helping to formulate stories and settings and a lot of a uh, lot of uh, advice on running games. So it's a really good book for that. Nice. All right, Alan, number seven. All right, so uh, my number seven is Vampire the Masquerade 5th Edition. Very uh, nice. I have, a, I have a deep nostalgic love. A lot of my list is nostalgia I'm looking at this year. There's a lot of games coming out that uh, tug on my nostalgia strings next year, I guess. That's good. No, uh, that's... Vampire is one of the first non-D&D RPGs I played, so the, the new edition excites me. It actually just unveiled the logo yesterday or today, the new logo for it. It looks great, so I am I am pumped. Very Which, cool. Ken Height Ken Height's the lead developer on that, isn't he? I believe so, yes. Yeah. So that that's really exciting. So Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. All right, my number seven is Numenera two. I've always wanted to play Numenera. I, I know that uh, down there's a couple of uh, stores down south of me that uh, really like Numenera. Uh, I've never really gotten a chance to kind of jump on, and uh, I think uh, I, I backed it on Kickstarter because I knew it was going to be a good point to jump on and, and try it out, and I'm excited to finally get a chance to uh, get the, uh, the new books and uh, hopefully hear what uh, kind of get into what everybody's raving about down down south uh, at uh, one of our games down uh, the southern part of the state. And uh, like I said, the uh, bundle of holding is the cipher system, and it's a great bundle, and everybody should act quick. If they're looking to uh, get into Numenera, they should probably pick that one up as well. So I'm excited. I'm excited for <laughs> Numenera 2, Monty Cook Games. Number six. All right, number six um, is the Yellow King excuse me, the Yellow King role-playing game uh, by Robin Laws coming out of Hellgrain Press. Um, yeah, it uh, uses the gumshoe system um, written by Robin Laws of uh, Ken and Robin Talk About Stuff and many, many other things. Robin's uh, a really, I like his games. He has, he's has he got really good ideas and he writes really interesting rule books like Feng Shui and stuff. So I'm really excited. I mean, I'm a big Cthulhu guy, so Yellow King definitely is interests me. Very cool. Yeah, I saw that. Uh, that was on Kickstarter. I, I don't know. I can't remember if I backed that or not. I know I looked at it a couple times. I'll have to yeah, take a look. It, yeah, that's some really nice sets on there, like four book sets with a nice slip case that that turns into like a, a, a game master screen. So, oh, nice. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. All right, Alan. Number six. All right, number six on my list is uh, Cortex Prime from Cam Banks. Ah, yes, I backed that. Ah, I did not back that one. I missed oh. that. So I will be picking it up when it comes out. Uh, the nice. Smallville role-playing game and Marvel Heroic role-playing game were among my favorites when it came to superhero role-play. So I am, I am just pumped for a new iteration of a system that powers a lot of my favorite games. Leverage, uh, you know, the powers the Firefly and Serenity RPGs. It's just it's a very versatile system. I'm psyched to see what Cam's going to do with it going forward. Yeah, that's it's kind of like this all-encompassing role-playing game, right? It's like you can use it for all sorts of different systems. Is, is yeah, I believe they said the the new core book will be just like a generic book that you can then it'll have you know different dials for running the different genres and stuff like that. So 
Nice, nice. Yeah, I'm excited to see that. I haven't heard, I haven't updated their Kickstarter in a while, so I haven't uh, haven't heard a whole lot from them. But uh, yeah, I backed that. That was quite a few months ago. So uh, yeah, I was excited. That uh, just barely, just barely missed my uh, my list. My number six is from a couple of guys that I've had on the channel recently. One, it, one of them is making some really wicked board games. He's made Wasteland Express, Dinosaur Island. He made, he co 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 designed this little game called Dead of Winter. Of course, I'm talking about John Gilmore and Dove Lewandowski, and I'm talking about their RPG, Kids on Bikes. It's an 80s uh, role-playing game, much kind of like Tales from the Loop, but uh, it's got their own kind of uh, system that they've, they've created with it. Uh, I love the art for this game. Uh, I love how simple the system is going to be. It's kind of like... Um, I don't know if anybody's played the My, My Little Pony Tales from Equestria game. Nice, Alan has. Um, it's it's really a sim simple uh, si simple system. Uh, you pretty much you have a stat. Your stat level is like the type of die that you have. So maybe you're not very good at something. So you have a D4 or a D6. And if you're really good at something, you have a D20. Um, but uh, I don't think I can play the My Little Pony Tales from Equestria game with my friends. But I can play See, kids on bikes with my friends. No, you just got to do it. Right, like no. you, they come over one night. You're like, "All right, guys, we're gonna play." Bam, friendship is magic. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the funny thing is, I, I have a buddy that, that my buddy Dave. I I know he would play Tales of Equestria with me, but man, he would pick on me quite a bit afterwards. So, yeah, no, I, I'd rather just. I think I'm just gonna stick to kids on bikes once that comes out. Um, I'm really excited to to see where uh, where this where this book ends up. Um, just because I know John and Doug are doing some uh, really great things and they really have a big passion for this game and it's going to be put out by Hunter's Books uh, and uh, yeah, I, I, I think that this is going to be a big hit for them in 2018 so I'm really excited to uh, finally get, get that book in my hands in uh, 2018. And uh, yeah, of course I'm an 80s kid so it kind of, you know, any, anything that gives you, like Alan said, nostalgia is a big factor right now in role playing. I think, and right? uh, I think, uh, I think, kids on bikes is going to be going to kick, going to going to get people in the uh, the '80s feels uh, once once that comes out. All right, Kent, number we're in our top five now. Top five. All right, my number five. Um... One of my favorite people in role playing games is Hannah Schaefer from uh, Make Big Things, and uh, a game that she's working on with uh, her partner Evan Rowland right now is called Quest Landia, the sequel. There is a Quest Landia one, which is about uh, you work collaborative co collaboratively to build worlds uh, that are going to collapse. Um, not a lot's known about the sequel. I know it's kind of revamping that game and adding stuff to it but what's really cool is they're doing a podcast uh hannah sorry hannah and evan are called design doc where they are designing the game kind of from concept to completion so oh, every, nice. you know every week or so they release a new episode and where they're kind of hashing out the game and creating it there so cool very cool so you're yeah. kind of seeing how the sausage is made so to speak yeah, yeah, you can follow along the whole process of it from concept to completion. So, that's cool. That's cool. Yeah. Alan, uh, how would you like to do that with some of your games? I'd be down. That would be pretty cool. Yeah. I actually have uh, I have Norlandia from Make Believe Games, and I backed uh, Damn the Man, Save the Music when that was on Kickstarter. Yep. So I, I'm, looking, I'm familiar with Thor. They do good work. I'm excited to see what they come out with for Questlandia too. Yeah. Yep, damn the man, save the music may may show up later. Nice. All right, Alan, All right. number five for you. Uh, so my number five, uh, Cubicle Seven makes a repeat appearance. Um, is uh the Moria box set that they're coming out with for the One Ring. I am a right. huge, huge Tolkien fan. The One Ring is my favorite fantasy RPG of all time, and uh, I am a massive deluxe box set campaign. Oh, I am. I am so there. It's not even funny. Nice. 
Nice. Yeah, that's uh, that's very very popular. That's on a lot of a lot of lists, and I actually that was kind of one that I, I assumed was going to be on yours as well. Yeah, it, the only reason is at five and not higher is the other stuff is pretty great. So pretty great. All right. Well, let's uh, we'll have to see what the what didn't what uh, prevented it from coming in higher. My number five is from Green Ronin, the Expanse RPG. There you go. This is supposed to be, I guess it's going to use the Fantasy Age mechanics, only they're going to revamp them for this the, the Expanse novels and uh, there's a TV show. I've, I, to be honest with you, I have never seen, I haven't read any of the novels, I haven't watched the TV show. I want to binge watch this show as much as I can and, and I think right before the RPG comes out, I'm going to just sit down and I'm just going to marathon it because everybody that that i know that watches it loves it they say it's just phenomenal alan's giving it's me the thumbs the, up the best science fiction show on tv right now see and i i dig sci-fi and, and i i'm really really excited uh, i i need to i need to sit down and just soak it all in and if i wasn't so busy this time of year i would be doing it already um but yeah it just sounds phenomenal i think kind of what Starfinder was for Pathfinder. I think Expanse, uh, the Expanse is going to be kind of for the Fantasy Age system. I, I think that that's kind of be going to be their go-to sci-fi genre for their Fantasy Age. Because I don't think they've they've said that they're going to do a, a sci-fi Fantasy Age. They've done a Dragon Age, Fantasy Age, and then there's another. I thought there was another Age RPG that they said they were going to do. So I think this might they, be their. They have Modern Age, and then Blue yeah, Rose uses Age. Fantasy Age too. So okay, so this. I, I think this might be their sci-fi version. I don't know. Maybe I'm speaking out of turn. But uh, I, Green Ronin, I, I, I'm a big fan of their stuff. I, we've had Steve on the ch on the channel before. Chris is awesome. You know, I get to, I got to talk with them a little bit at uh, PAX Unplugged. They're just great, great people. And uh, I'm really excited for the Expanse RPG. I think it's going to be be a great, great product, and it's going to be wicked, wicked hot once it once it releases. All right, number. Four. All right. All right. Yep, my number four. Um, so this week I got a giant eight-pound box that came in, and <laughs> <laughs> the name on it, well, the image on it was some dinosaurs uh, and some nice neon colors, and the name on it was John Gilmore, and it reminded me of a role-playing game that I have back that is coming, and that is Kids on Bikes oh, by John Gilmore. <laughs> by John Gilmore. Yeah. Yep. Well, not that I forgot that I backed it. I was just trying to segue into it. <laughs> no, it was smooth. It was good. It was good. You it, did a good job. It was, a, it was a poor pit. But yeah, everything Doug said, uh, is exact reasons I'm excited about it. Uh, it's a very, it's in the 80s. It's very Stranger Things inspired, you know, based, you know, you have powered kids and stuff. But it just, and all the stretch goes that were unlocked. Um, it's just, it's such a cool game, cool concept that I'm really into. And I can't wait to get it in my hands. And I love how the art is kind of just, yeah. it's reminiscent of those old 80s books that you used to read. Or at least I used to read. I don't know, but you guys are probably younger than I am. So you guys probably don't remember reading all those 80s uh, textbooks. But uh, it totally reminds me of that. And uh, have, have, you, have you played uh, Dinosaur Park yet? Have you, have you played that game yet that you got in? Or is it still oh, just no. on your shelf? Yeah. I'm right. Yeah, no, I Played with the coins because the coins are really awesome. Uh, but no, I haven't. I haven't even punched it out yet. I need to. Uh, I need to find someone that has a copy around here, and I need to sit down and play it. I played uh, when I was at Carnage. I played Wasteland Express, and I loved it. It was so much fun. I just don't know if I had it in my collection. I don't think I'd have anybody to play it with. So uh, I don't mind uh, finding someone else that has a copy of that game and playing, sitting down and playing with it because uh, it was it was a lot of fun. Yeah, Alan, Alan, have you played uh, either of those games? Have, that's no, I, 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 uh, uh, when it comes to board games, I tend to any to board game that takes me more than two hours may as well just be an RPG. So, yeah, yeah, no, it's uh, Wasteland Express took us quite a while. It was yeah. definitely longer than uh, there's. There's kind of a, a learning curve with that game, but once you got it down, it was nice. So much fun. So much I might, fun. I might have to find somebody who has it. So, Alan, what uh, what's your number four? Uh, my number four is John Carter of Mars by Modifius Games. Wow, that I am, high. A, I am a huge fan of the John Carter IP. 
So Very I have, cool. I it would have been lower, but Star Trek Adventures was basically the best game of last year in my book. Okay. It was amazing, and uh, I, I can't wait to see what this looks like. Nice. Yeah, I'm very excited about it. I actually just had Chris Birch from Modiphius on the channel. I watched. And, uh, oh, nice. Thanks for watching. It was it was a lot of fun. Chris is a great guy. He's got some great plans for, for this IP, and uh, I'm really, really excited about it, as you might see later on in my list. There we go. So, uh, number four for me is... Star Star Wars the 30th anniversary issue from Fantasy Flight Games. It's a reprint from uh, what West End Games, correct? Yep. Yep. Uh, it. Uh, I'm a big Star Wars guy. I love Star Wars. Um, we're not going to talk about uh, Episode uh, Eight on this uh, on this uh, because I have some very uh, some some very mixed emotions about this uh, this new movie, but I love the original trilogy and I'm excited to, to get a reissue of this game. This is like the first entry on my uh, on my list that's not like a totally new product. It's, this is like a reprint but I think it's going to be huge for uh, Fancy Flight. I think it's going to sell out just like that. I think it's going to be crazy. Um, I'm not a big fan of their other Star Wars uh, RPGs. Uh, I just They just didn't seem to click with me but I want a nice fresh brand new copy of this 30th anniversary and it's in like a box slip case right it's like it's supposed to be really 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 beautiful Alan, Alan looks like he's he's got some 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 words to say about uh, about this entry it'll be really pretty you're right yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> but yeah so it, it's Star Wars it's on my list it's it's up there pretty high because Star Wars it's if if it's Transformers Star Wars Ninja Turtles it's gonna be high on my list I'm gonna tell you right now that's that's kind of that's kind of how I roll but anyway <laughs> that's the uh, that seems legit. that that yeah. seems legit that's fair yeah so all right that was my number four we're in our top three now number three oh kids. boy all right my number three is a game that I backed solely on the image that I saw uh, it was of a mouse riding a motorcycle, and I knew that I had to have that game. So we're talking about Heavy Metal Thunder Mouse by, nice. by Derek uh, Kamal, I think, from Shoreless Skies. Uh, yeah, it's a it's it's a uh, Sons of Anarchy, but mice. It's a bunch of mice <laughs> on, my, mice biker gang rolling around this city, uh, just doing their biker 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 things that they do. Uh, the art's really cool and. Yeah, I mean, it's just you know, it it hits a lot of nostalgia things for me, like um, <clears throat> like mouse on a motorcycle and uh, red wall and stuff like that. Very cool, Derek. Derek is awesome. This just barely. There was two games that I wanted to put on this list on my top ten, and they just barely missed the cut. Uh, this was one of them. Um, Derek is awesome. We're actually going to do an actual play of uh, heavy metal biker mice um, that. Uh, uh, on this channel, once the game is about to be released, or once it releases, um, just uh, because Derek said that he we've we've already kind of got that in the works, um, so be on the lookout for that. I'm really excited about this. Uh, it is a great IP, or it's a great great uh, genre. It's so like you could play this with kids, you could play this with adults. I think uh, I think it's really all encompassing. Uh, it's pretty much everything that Kent said. It's great. Great, great. And Derek, I'm excited to see what uh, Derek uh, and Sherlock Skies uh, Publishing does uh, further on down the road. I think um, I think this isn't going to be the only great uh, product they're going to have out. Yeah, yeah. All right, that means me, right. huh? That means you're number three, my friend. All right, uh, my number three is Scion, second edition from Onyx Path Publishing. Nice. Very it was uh, crowdfunded back in 2016. I think it was supposed to be out in 2017, but it's not out yet. So that means I can put it on my list for next year. Absolutely. Uh, Scion is the longest campaign I ever ran the campaign for. I want to say we played for four years, about twice a week. Wow, that's crazy. It was it was intense. And I am just psyched beyond belief for the new edition. So Very cool. Very cool. I don't think I've ever played that. I'll have to. Uh, I'll have to look at that. If it's got the Alan Seal of approval, I'll have to. Uh, it's up there. I'll have to look at, have to look at it. 
a little bit more. I've not, uh, not, that's one that has kind of eluded me. Number three for me, John Carter from Mars, the RPG nice. from uh, Modiphius. Uh, I love these books in high school. Um, it's been forever since I've read them. I actually just down, re -download, I just downloaded the audiobooks on, on, uh, uh, so I've been listening to them a little bit at work as I can. Um, it uses their 2D20 system, which I think is pretty easy to, to learn. Um, from everything that Chris has said, that uh, the book is pretty close to being completed. Uh, it sounds like he really wants to get it out before the middle of next year, next year which is really aggressive. Um, and it sounds like he's got some really good plans for this. I love how the fact that they're going to, uh, they're kind of making it into three eras. Um, I love how they're putting out minis with this with this game. Uh, it just, it looks like they're really giving John Carter the treatment that it deserves. And I think that if you can get your hands on one of those early uh, pledge levels that uh, has like the super premium uh, books, I think you're going to have something really special uh, once, uh, once it's all said and done, if you can get on that Kickstarter really quick. And I think the Kickstarter they said is January 9th. Um, and yeah, it's pretty fast up there. Yeah. So, so, uh, don't, uh, don't make sure you mark your calendars and, 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 uh, get on that Kickstarter quick because they've got, uh, they've got some really big plans for it and I can't wait to see all like the, the minis expansions that they, that they're going to put out with this game. And I know it's going to make me go broke. Uh, first thing, you know, it's going to start out my, my 2018 real, you know, in, in, with an empty wallet already. So that is John Carter from Mars, number three for me. Top two spots. What, Kent, your runner-up, my friend, what is number two? <laughs> my number two is uh, Tragedies of Middle School. It's by a whole bunch of different designers um, from Ninth Level Games. It's just, it's all kinds of different games. you got tabletop role-playing games, some storytelling games, uh, LARPs in there. It's just a big with um like horror tropes that but set in junior high so you're already setting it at a horrifying time of your life and you're just making it horrible there's like seven minutes to hell which is a riff off seven minutes uh or seven minutes in in heaven um it's just i don't know i like i mean that's my type of thing short games story games that tell uh, that you use to collaborate tell a story and the design of it's really cool it's got kind of a you know, eighties, nineties design to it. So nice, nice. Yeah, no, I, I, uh, I back this one as well. Um, of course, Doug, Doug Lewandowski is the designer for uh, Seven Minutes in Hell. Yes. Also, is uh, you know co co designing with uh, Kids on Bikes, and uh, yeah, Ninth Level. Uh, they are. It's Chris, Chris O'Neill. I actually got a talk, chance to talk with him at uh, Pax Unplugged. Super super nice guy. If you've ever if you ever see him at uh, at uh, at a convention, he's got a huge personality. So much fun. Go over to the go over to their booth and just you won't even have to try to strike up strike up a conversation with Chris. He just he's just there, and you can tell he just loves this industry. And uh, he's uh, yeah, they're they're doing some great stuff uh, there at uh, at ninth level. So uh, that's always you yep. always like to see that as uh, as a company you like to see people that are energetic and they just love love being part of the uh, the industry. Yeah, yeah, yep. So that's my number two tragedies of middle school. Nice, Alan. Your number two. Uh, my number two is uh, the Legend of Five Ring of the Five Rings Fifth Edition from Fantasy Flight Games. Wow, I I'm I'm this is this I know you're big uh, Legends of the uh, Legends of the Five Rings. I'm I'm surprised this is so high though. Uh, you know, uh well, I don't even know if it's going to be out this year. Um, okay. I'm hedging my bets that it will because they've had a very public open wow. beta. It, and it's a fairly the beta is fairly well developed okay. and formed. It's basically a finished game. So my guess is you'll see it at Gen Con. Okay. But, I, mean, sure. it, it, oh, I don't sense. know. I don't have any special knowledge. I'm just basing my guess on the way they've done products in the past versus what I know about RPG development cycles. So this game almost made my list. But uh, I'm excited for the new twist. I'm excited uh, for the new storyline they've done. Uh, I, I L5R is a big thing for me going way, way back. I've been playing for 
I played for 18 years. Wow. Before Fantasy Flight bought it, it's not a small IP in my life. So I am excited to see something hit the shelf. Again, a nostalgia kick for you. Like, I think. I'm telling you, like half of these, they're to, I mean, probably two thirds are all nostalgia. That's awesome. No, that's that's great. To, you know, when you can tap into that uh, that fan base again, it's it's great. Because uh, you know, I think, like, I just like board games has kind of hit this huge, you know, like golden age. I think role playing games is really coming up and in, getting into its own as well. So I think uh, I think they're really trying to get uh, folks that uh, haven't been in the hobby or maybe that they've they've played like an edition or two, they're really trying to get uh, those those players back in and, and re-energized. And, and I think that's why you're seeing a lot of these second and third edition games that uh, were big years ago. Very cool. My number two was a game that was... Scheduled to come out, I think, in 2017. Didn't quite make it because the company wanted to rewrite the campaign that, or the the campaign that's included in the book because they didn't feel it was quite up to snuff. So they wanted to put the U.S. edition of this book on hold and get it right. And I'm talking about Free Leagues, Mutant Year Zero, Mechatron. RPG. If you are a fan of mechs, if you are a Transformers fan, any of this stuff, I've got the beta. They, they've already sent me the beta rules. I love this game already. I can't wait to see the finished book. Um, I love that Mutant Year Zero engine um, that they, they that they use for their games, and I can't wait to get my hands on the robot version of Mutant Year Zero. I think it's going to be so much fun. And I love the fact that they even, they didn't want to put out a product that the quality or not quite up to the experience that they want for folks. And so they've deliberately held the book back and made sure that this adventure that's in the book is people to play. And uh, Tomas and, and his crew at uh, Free League, they're just doing some great stuff. And yeah, Mechatron, I can't wait to see it uh, once it hits hits my uh, hits my doorstep. And uh, as, it just adds more to that uh, year zero mutant year zero. Uh, I love I love anytime you can play a sentient robot. <laughs> give me that game because I'm all about that. That was my number two, Mechatron by Free League Publishing. The moment of truth, your number one, your top role-playing, your in most anticipated role-playing game for 2018. All right, well, I've already spoiled it because I said that a game was going to show up on my list, and it hasn't yet. So it is Damn the Man, Save the Music by Hannah Schaefer from Make Big Things. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> And I mean, it is essentially it's Empire Records, the role playing game where you are you're this ragtag group of uh, people working in this record store, and it's up to you to save it. Uh, the man's coming down to to shut it down, and and you have to work together to save this record store. And I just you know, like I said earlier, Hannah Shaper is one of my favorite designers out there uh, from the game Fourteen Days and Questlandia, and uh, this now uh, it's just. I love everything that she does, and this game's just really exciting for me just because I, I enjoy uh, movies like Empire Records and stuff like that. So, I, unfortunately, I missed the Kickstarter, so I'm just waiting for it to release, which I know is coming up soon uh, in the early part of 2018. So that's Damn, it, Damn the Man, Save the Music by Hannah Schaefer from Make Big Things. Nice. Very good. Very good. All right, Alan. Do we need to – We need. I need to get, like, a drum roll uh... – <laughs> like a uh, soundboard or something for, for these, for future top 10 lists. If, if folks want to see more top 10 lists. All right. <laughs> All right. So number one is the, uh, the RPG that soaked up several months worth of my gaming budget. <laughs> when it, when it hit Kickstarter just a month ago, it is the flash Gordon role-playing game for Savage worlds. Nice. It just uh, barely missed my, yeah, uh, my he's list. Not, he's going to save us all. If you, you might've heard flash. 
Yes, <laughs> I am. Savage Worlds is already one of my favorite rule sets. Nice. Uh, play. I have shelves dedicated to Savage Worlds products. Um, and Flash Gordon is something I grew up on. So I am... Again, it's not a nostalgia gaming, but the IP is a nostalgia product, and I am psyched. Very cool. Very cool. Can I, I, I've i got a Sam Jones story if you want to hear it. I, I've, I've met Sam. Well, I can't say that I met Sam Jones. Of course, Sam Jones, if, if for those that, that don't know, Sam Jones actually played Flash Gordon in the, in the movie, and I was at uh, a, a convention, was it three years ago? And he was at the convention. I went into the bathroom, and I'm at the urinal, and who pulls up, who, who walks up right next to me and uses the urinal right next to me? Sam Jones. And of course, I couldn't think of his name at the top of my head because I'm doing, you know, bathroom stuff. And I wanted to say, hey, you're Flash. You're... But of course, you know, it's such an awkward time to recognize somebody. So I didn't say anything. I just kind of did the, the head nod. And then I washed my hands and then went, went, uh, went outside. And then I'm like thinking, man, like, I want to meet this guy. Like, how come uh, of all the times to meet this guy, should I just like wait around afterwards? Like after he comes out of the bathroom and be like, hey, I was just next to you. I'm a yeah, big there's, fan. there's no graceful way to do that. There wasn't. <laughs> so I'm just like, so I'm debating. I'm like outside the bathroom restroom, like debating whether or not I should like say something and like introduce myself and say, it. but yeah, no, I walked away. Cause like, I'm just like, no, this is just going to be awkward. Like, I just can't do this. <laughs> so yeah, my wife was standing there with me and she's like, what are we doing? I'm like, well, Sam Jones is right in here. She's like, Sam Jones. I'm like, yeah, Flash Gordon. Like he was just next to me. I want to meet him. She's like, you didn't, you, you didn't meet him in there. I'm like, no. I kind of met Sam Jones like <laughs> a couple years back, but he's uh he's writing the forward for the game. Oh yeah, yeah he's a super super nice guy, and I'm sure yeah. he would have been, you know, he would have been fine. But it was just so super awkward. I imagine. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, yeah, no, it's uh, he's uh, he loves his fans and uh, super super nice guy. He's still in like really good shape too. Well, I would, I mean, that's kind of creepy now that you've told us this story and you're commenting on that. <laughs> no, I'm just saying, like, like he's like I don't know. You seem dude. like you're moving into it. Uh, whatever, <laughs> whatever. You can I tell you. <laughs> whatever. Just saying. That yes, that, that was, is my number one. I am nice, nice. Sorry to uh, all, all campaigns I'm running will be suspended immediately when that arrives. Very cool, very cool. Yeah, they're doing some really great stuff. Uh, Pinnacle is uh, they're the ones that are putting that out, right? Yes, they are. They're fantastic. I love. Pinnacle. And uh, yeah, they've uh, they've got some really cool stuff for that. All right, my number one, the moment of truth. It's another free league game because I love these guys. They're doing some great stuff, Thomas. You know, I, I, I'm digging Free League. It is their fantasy game that uses the Mutant Year Zero system, but they're kind of tweaking it for the fantasy. It's Forbidden Lands. And normally I'm not I'm not a fantasy guy. I've already said that at the top of the hour. I, we're, I'm not a fantasy guy, but I dig this product. It looks really cool. Uh, they've got uh, – I forget who, who's doing the art for it, but it's like an old – It's it's someone that did Swedish RPGs back in the eighties. He's like, he was like pretty much set the standard for, uh, for Swedish RPGs. And I should have, I should have researched it a little bit more, but I love the art. It's like all gritty and, and it looks really, really awesome. The other thing that I really like about this game is that it's kind of like, we all know that the legacy games are all the rage in, uh, in the board game industry. This is kind of like a legacy game for an RPG. They, they're going to include maps uh, that uh, they have like they have a map with like stickers. And so as you're doing your campaign, you put these stickers down and, and you're going to be able to put like, you know, all these like keeps that uh, and strongholds that, uh, that you've visited along the way, you know, maybe grave sites where folks have died that the, 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 you've, the people have played. So you're going to have, once your campaign's over, you're going to have like this map that's unique that nobody else ever has that uh, you're going to be able to probably maybe frame and put on your wall. And I, I just dig, I dig uh, free league stuff. I think that the, I think it's going to be another really big, big hit for them. 
And uh, I can't wait. Of course, Simon Stonhug is doing the, the cover art for, for their book, uh, for, for uh, Forbidden Lands, and it just looks awesome. And, uh, yeah. Anyway, Brie League takes the top two spots for me. I'm sorry. Yeah, I just I get excited about their stuff. I love the D, I love their D6 dice pool stuff. I, I think it's I think their games are just a lot of fun to play. Yeah, I'll, I'll, and uh, I almost backed that one, and I didn't because I was like, well, I like RPGs, but I don't play them. And then you know, a few months later, I started this podcast, and now that's all I do. So I wish I wish that I had started my show earlier because then I would have committed to backing that one. Because at that point, I was like, I'll never play it. I'll just have this book that'll sit on my shelf. Well, it's not even, and it, it, it's unique because they're doing like a box set it's two books and a map and stickers and like it's not like you're just getting like a book and putting it on your shelf it's it's like a whole kit that that, that uh, they've never and they've never done that they've usually just done you know books and so they're kind of taking what's worked for them and even kind of going beyond uh and creating a, a totally new product i think they've done box sets for the swedish market before um, yeah. so, you know, they, they're familiar to do f for doing that, but in, in other countries, but this is the first time they're going to do a U.S. release for, uh, for in that style. So I think that's uh, really cool. And, and, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really excited to see how they're going to tweak the, uh, year zero engine and, and, and make it fantasy based. Cause they've already said that, you know, some of the weapons are going to be, you know, higher, uh, dice, uh, you know, so they can have like D8, D10s and, uh, you know d20s for for for, for weapons and, and relics that uh, are very powerful in their game which is kind of neat because uh yeah i think that's uh i think it's really cool so that's my uh that's my top 10 list uh thank you guys for for coming on and doing your top 10s with me uh there were a couple a couple games that uh, i think there i don't think i mentioned one one other game i want to mention that just barely missed my uh missed my list was uh uh, Happiest Apocalypse on Earth by uh, Christopher Gray. Christopher Gray is doing some some really cool things for Two uh, C Gaming. Uh, he put out uh, he's going to be putting out his own game called uh, Happiest Apocalypse. It's pretty much like this uh, creepy uh, mouse park. I don't want to say you know I don't want uh, anybody uh, knocking on my door and taking down my YouTube channel for copyright infringement. But uh, it's uh, you know it's this creepy mouse park uh, game. Uh, where you're in this amusement park and uh, just barely missed my cut, but I want to give him a shout out. He's my honorable mention for for my list, uh, and he's just such a great guy. And and I get to meet him at uh, PAX Unplugged as well, and and sit down and talk with him. And he's got some really cool stuff in the works uh, later on down the road. And I hope hopefully we'll see uh, some of his his uh, kickstarters for 2018 in 2018. Maybe 2019 we'll we'll, uh, we'll have his him on uh, on my list a little bit more. Yeah, he, he's doing some really cool stuff. Yeah, he's, he's that contact secret, that top secret project with Galanet Games. Top, top secret. Wow, that's. Uh, Wait, what? Uh, what? I don't. I didn't. I didn't hear anything. I didn't hear anything. Um, guys, are you? What else are you excited for for 2018? In the uh, any, anything else that uh, you uh, just barely missed your list that you'd like to uh, give a special shout out to? Uh, so yeah, L5R uh, just barely missed my list, and then. Um, uh, Invisible Sun from Monty Cook Games just uh, yes. missed my list. Yep. Yes, that uh, that looked really, really intriguing. Yeah. Alan, uh, you said uh, before, at the top of the hour, you said you only had nine games when we first when we first got on here. I think I read ten. I said ten. Yeah, right? no, you said ten. You said ten. But uh, is there anybody anything else that you're you're kind of excited for? Uh, maybe. Uh, I mean, I'm always excited for any new game. Um, but you know, my rule, I don't I don't count games I work on, so that takes about oh, it, feels, man. It, feels, it feels like a third of the releases at this point. Well, let's let's talk a little bit about some of the games that you have in the works or you want to talk about any any releases that you have for uh, 2018 that you can not not that uh, I don't want to spoil anything that you have. Yeah, 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 no, that's fine. Uh, but, but but you've had some some kickstarters in 2017 that that will probably be releasing in 2018. What uh, what yeah, would you so like to do? Tiny Dungeon um will be out pretty quick. Cold Shadows will hit retail release. You can buy the PDFs now, but the, the physical stuff will be out then. Um, we'll be doing a, kind of a dark fantasy game called For Coin and Blood. Nice, that's um, a Kickstarter. Uh, it'll, be a, it'll be a Flash Kickstarter, only one week. Nice. It'll be nice. super cheap. We'll uh, have to have you on uh, later on in, in yeah. uh, the early part of January and talk a little, yeah. a little bit about that. I've never I've never made a game that uses some of the classic design elements of levels and stuff. So this is my kind of old school feeling game. Nice. Uh, Tiny Wastelands will be back. 
Very and cool. The Gallant, the Gallant Night Games is doing the second edition of the West End Games D6 edition under license. Oh, nice. From West End Games. And that'll be, we'll have a quick start at Gen Con with a Kickstarter in September. Very cool. So, very cool. That's, lots uh, of, that's, our, that's our big thing this year. Lots of uh, big and exciting things for, uh, for Gallant Night Games. Very cool. Yeah, it should be good. Very cool. All right, folks, that's our top 10 list of most anticipated RPGs for 2018. If you if you like this type of content, I'm going to tell you again, please give the video a like down below. So, so then that way I have some free feedback. I don't usually ask for, for this type of stuff, but I, I just like to know that what content on the channel, I always like to see what the feedback is. So this is this kind of gives me a little bit of feedback. If you, if you like this type of content, click the like down below. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed, and just you know, let me know if uh, if you like this type of thing. Uh, I am toying with the idea of putting out a top ten uh, RPGs released in 2017 list. Uh, if you're interested in that, let me know in the comments. And uh, I want to thank Alan and Kent for both both of you guys for coming on and being a part of this channel for this year. Um, and I, I look forward to hopefully working with you guys in 2018. Oh, and, absolutely. Uh, and uh, I, I, I'm a big fan of what both of you guys, both of what you guys are doing for, uh, you know, content and for games. Uh, I know, Kent, tonight your, your voice is kind of giving out on you, and I really appreciate you being a trooper and, and uh, still doing this with us. And, Alan, thank you for coming on again. Always. I, I love the snazzy shirt that you got on. It's yeah, great. right? It's Somebody great. sent it to me. Yeah, no, it's great. Um, if you are, uh, if, if you like this channel, please, uh, I, one of the big things I am going to be doing a 2017 year in review for VCG uh, video, but one thing that uh, that we have uh, we did set up in 2017 was a uh, online web store uh, with some VCG product. Uh, if you're a fan of this channel, then you know I don't I try not to ask for uh, for anything uh, because I, I know everybody uh, has their own stuff going on so uh, but if you if you'd like to support the channel a little bit uh, I'll you know we do have a, an online store that you can pick up some snazzy shirts and I can't can't get the exclusive polos though like these but uh, we got t-shirts and, and game mats and, and uh, stuff so feel free to check those out I'll put the link to that uh, in the in the description I also put the description uh, the link to uh, the stores uh, the companies that uh, were in our top 10 lists uh, in this description as well so please check them out um, follow them on social media you know, check their Kickstarters out when, when they launch them because they are doing some really great stuff. And uh, I can't say enough that these folks are making games mostly not to make money, but just to kind of get their games out and have people enjoy gaming. And because they have a passion for this industry and, and anything we can do to, to support them and, and to kind of um, get word out about their, their, their games and their projects, uh, let's, let's help them out as much as we can. So... All right, that's going to do it for me. My name is Doug. This has been Victory Condition Gaming because winning shouldn't be the only victory condition when you get to the table. We'll see you all in the next video. Thanks for watching.